And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're talking about the newest expansion for Quarriers, not Quest of the Gladiator. This is all this is all the Quarrier stuff I have so far, but the newest expansion is Quartifacts. Now, what do you think of Quarriers before the expansion? Is Quarriers a game you like? Yeah. It made me feel like Dominion just with dice. Yeah, it's 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 a little lighter than Dominion, I think. There's not as many choices to be made, but it's just fun to roll lots of different dice and play with them. There's been three expansions for Quartifax so far. Um, I'm forgetting what they are. I know there's Quest for the Gladiator, there's Quarmageddon, and there was one with Cursed Dice in it. Um, this is the newest one. It adds a new mechanic to the game. Let's take a look. Okay, the first thing I want to mention is the box itself. The box itself, ooh, Dice Tower logos. But the box itself uh, is the same as the last two expansions have been, and that's because each of these boxes can hold every dice from the game. If you look here, this is the current box that I have, and this is without all the new dice in it, but there's still spots here. You can see the tray where I lift it off, and there's all those dice, and then here's dice. There's plenty of room left to fit all the dice from this expansion, which are over here, and probably one more expansion, I'm going to guess, which is pretty good, and if they keep putting out boxes like this, then, you know, you're fine. The, the Quartifax itself doesn't take up a lot of the box, but still, it's nice that they do that in case this is the first expansion that you've bought. Now, Quartifax adds a brand new uh, feature to the game, and that is quests. There are several quest cards in the game. Uh, there's actually four of each color. There's three different colors. There's a level one quest, a level two quest, a level three quest. Each of these quests has two larger associated dice that go with it. So you will use only one quest per game of each type. And in a three player game, you only use two quests. And in a two player game, there's only one quest out there anyway. Now what players can do on their turn is that when they summon a creature, so let's say I summon this knight here, and let's focus on him a little bit. He is a level one knight. You can see that in the corner. So I can send him on the level one quest up here because I need a level one person to do that. If I had two level one knights, then I would be able to send them together on the level two quest. Or if I had a level two knight, I could send him on the level two quest by himself. If I had a level two and a one, I could send them to the three quest by themselves also. When you send them out, this game gives you another token of each person's color, so remember whose dice have been sent on that quest. If nobody else tries to go on that particular quest, then at the beginning of my next turn, I'm going to get points for that quest. So notice that this one here gives me four glory, and then those dice are gone. If you're playing the advanced rules, which you should, the dice are culled. But not only that, you get to roll the artifact die that comes with that. Now that artifact die will either give you some automatic thing, like you'll see here, draw four more dice this turn, and you get to use them, or have four extra quiddity. This is three dice and three quiddity, two dice and two quiddity. But it also might give you an item that you can equip on your people, on one of your creatures. And these items can be crazy. Like for example here, if I roll the question mark, I get to capture a quarry that's six or less. If I get the medallion here, I can equip that on a creature that gives them plus five defense. If I give them a bow, they will double their attack. If I give them the triclops skull, then if they score in the future, they'll get double glory. Here, if I get the Excalibur, and oh my goodness, that's one of the worst names ever. But when you attack, the first defending creature chosen by a player has zero defense. And the helmet here, when I attack the helm, I can flip to any creature die face. And so each one of these, here you have the Holy Quail, <laughs> second worst name. But anyhow, all this stuff is in the game. Now, if someone goes on a quest, and I don't like the fact that they're on that quest, and I want to go on that quest, I can attack them with a bunch of my dice who want to go on the quest and said, and then the dice will simultaneously attack and defend against each other. And 
you kill each other just like the normal, except now you're both attacking each other. The, the, the attacker, if he loses dice, no big deal. Well, they're, they're gone, but it, you know, it's no big deal. If the defender loses dice, the attacker gets one glory point for each die he kills. And if he kills all of them, then he's there with whatever people he has left from attacking on that quest. And the same thing can happen. So, you now have a couple options when you go out and when you play this game. Are you going to, when you roll creatures and you summon them, are you going to keep them in front of them to score glory? Or are you going to send them out on a quest? Will you attack someone else's quest or will you go to a different quest? Um, so there's those options. Because of that, the game brings us a new basic creature here, the Squire. Now it's important that the Squire is in the game. He's used in every game because the Apprentice, remember these nasty little brown dice who are really a pain in the neck? Those guys are wimps and they never go on quests. The Squire will go on a quest. Uh, one thing that's cool about him is that he's zero cost. He's a zero level, so he comes for free. He can't go on a quest by himself, obviously, because of his zero level. But he gets plus one attack and plus one defense when he is on a quest. And when you buy a squire, you can buy another dice. So these dice are bought quite often. The game also comes with an upgraded scoreboard because there's a lot more glory points that will be. This is the original scoreboard. The new scoreboard, you see, instead of going to 20, now goes to 25. And the ending conditions, instead of being 12, 15, and 20, are 15, 19, and 25. So there's uh, that, that's an addition, and like I said, it gives you four more tokens. So let's take a look at the creatures that come with this game. First up, we have the guides. The guides are fairly weak creatures, but they help others. This one here lets you summon two creatures for one quiddity less. Uh, this one here lets you summon one creature for free when you summon it. Here you get an extra die when you use them. They're, they're like helper dice. They're not that great on their own, but they're pretty powerful uh, when in combination. Very similar to that, the Pegasus dice, or the Pegasi die, I'm not sure how, what's the poor old Pegasus. Here they work together to give themselves extra bonuses and defense and attack and things like that. Then we have the uh, Pixies. The Pixies have question marks on them which can give them uh, basically something to the effect of uh, each pixie, either power is equal to the number of pixies in total, or there are always three, or the number of creatures, whichever one's greater. So they have this opportunity to fluctuate in power depending on how many people own them. And then we have a stronger creature here, the Mighty Knight of Quamelot. Oh, oh my goodness, that name. Um, but these guys can, this guy, when you go on a quest, the, when he scores, you get the die back, and when he completes a quest, he can reroll the quest die twice. That's a pretty neat ability, and I like the fact that there's people who can do things with the quest specifically. This guy can reroll dice, this guy can destroy a creature that's a lower level, but he's still not as powerful as the mighty Minotaurs. Minotaurs are really cool. This guy can't be destroyed unless two creatures attack him. This one here can pay quiddity to add to his attack value. <laughs> and this gentleman can switch his attack and defense. We also have some spells. This one here I think is one of the coolest color combinations in the game. The Quasars, and that they, they can help you lose damage, but the more powerful Quasars, especially the Quasar spell, lets you trade one of your dice with a die that someone else has in front of them. I love doing that. And then for those of you who like to mess with your opponents, we have the misdirection spells, which make your opponents re-roll dice or send dice back into their uh, used pool from their active pool. Really annoying type stuff. All right, you can see that Quarter Effects will change the game dramatically. What do you think of this expansion? Um, I really like this game because I like the quest part, um, how you had to get like the level three, level two, level one monsters out on their quest and try to make sure that they have enough defense that they won't be killed. Um, it was fun rolling the big dice because it was just fun to roll big dice. Well, yeah, and getting those rewards is a pretty cool thing. Look, I'm going to come out and say this, guys. This is the fourth expansion for Quarriers so far. And this one, to me, if you have the base game of Quarriers and you were looking for expansion, this would be the first one. This is the best expansion. And it's not even a close second for me. That's how much I like this one. And I'll tell you why, because of the strategic decisions that it adds. Uh, we always play with the variant that was introduced in, I think, uh, Cormageddon or I don't remember, 
Quest of the Core, one of them it was at it, where essentially you can buy two dice in a turn instead of one. And where when you score a die, that die is culled rather than you picking any die. So that keeps you from just buying the biggest and baddest monsters. And that added some more decisions to the game. This also adds those decisions to the game because you have to sit there and go, should I go in a quest or should I keep them in front of me? If you keep them in front of you, you will score a little bit more glory than when you send them on the quest. But, but the quest gives you the rolling of the die, which can be a big deal. And should you attack somebody else, sometimes you have to just to stop them from winning. There's more victory points, but the game plays just as fast because you get the victory points on the track. I love this expansion. Uh, the dice that are come with it, the new monsters, they're, they're okay. You know, they're interesting monsters. I like but, the Minotaur. He was my favorite. Yeah, well, you know, actually he's my favorite too. Well, he you kept buying the Pegasus. I thought that was your favorite. Or was well, you just bought it because he was cheap? It was cheap. Uh, <laughs> but I'm telling you, the, the quarter facts part of this, going out and searching for the stuff, the, the rewards are fantastic. I, I love this. Any final thoughts? It's just that next time we'll never replay Quarters, I hope that the quest will be in them again. Oh, well, if you're playing with me, they definitely will be. That's an automatic thing. They will be in every game, and I hope that they add more quests as time goes by, because that would be fun to see a variety. But I think even in this box, the 12 different quests, that's a pretty big variety as it goes. So, uh, And this box can hold everything, like I said. We have everything in one box at this point in time. Oh, so, well. so super high rating for this. Really like it. Best expansion for Quarriers ever, and takes Quarriers really to a level where I almost would rather play this than Dominion at this point. <laughs> That's how much I like it now. You just have had less card stuff or dice, <laughs> but still a lot of fun. Alrighty. Quarriers. Quartifacts. Oh yeah. Really though, this, they need to stop using the QU. Like Excalibur. Uh... Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.